Well, welcome to another video here. First light at camp. Of course, I'm up at Sandy Cape. A few keen eyes will have recognised that already. Uh, I'm here for two nights. Just had last night. I got in. I got in reasonably early. Um, left early. Got in early. It's around a four-hour drive for me from my way down in Mandra. Um So I left early. Got in about noon. Was flabbergasted at how busy it is, considering it was a Thursday. I thought I would have been pretty good. Just, like basically full. And then more people were coming in through the afternoon. I'd say even more will come tomorrow, uh, today, then Friday. Got in bed early. Bed early, rise early. That's my sort of my motto these days. Catch first light. Get up early, catch first light. You have to. You have to make the effort to get up early and watch the sunrise. It's such a treat. Such a good way to start the day out camping. So yeah, this is quite lovely. venturing out now for a bit of an explore check out some of this history that's around the area too So this is North Head and that that you can see back there behind me is the old World War II site, Radar Station 48 and those old bunkers are also known as concrete igloos, I'm going to go check them out. So these concrete bunkers were built part of World War II. It was uh, radar stations, these were generators. They were part of a bigger, there's a few more remains out further on the tracks, a few footings around the general area. This isn't just all there is. But this is the most obvious. This is the, the point of interest that everyone comes out to see. Um, but these were generator huts. They had little generators in here. And their purpose was there was radars around the area, so it's called Radar 48. 
World War II it was around 43, 43 to 45 in those couple of years there. Around 200 odd people worked in these over that two year old period. The Japs were threatening to invade. So they decided to build these, build these big radars. I'll put a picture of one up on the screen actually. And that's what these generators were powering, these big radars and basically the idea was that it would communicate, they called it a silent war, or a silent war within the war. And basically what it meant was this was the, this was the area for Australia and its allies. So you're talking England, Australia, uh, sorry, America, England and America. They could all communicate within these radars. They could, they could communicate um, and sort of fight the war silently within that secret silent communication so they're an incredible part of the war world war ii it's just so incredibly isolated you think about how isolated it would have been back then i don't know how long the guys were coming out to stay out here at a time but yeah it would have been a very suicide and suicide and alcoholism were the two biggest issues for the boys out here would have been hard, would have been very tough, tough times. But they played a massive, important role. It's just such a shame to not see them preserved and protected and, I don't know, seems like a real waste. Just let them sit here and get vandalised and destroyed. It's a real shame. Should be more information about them. Should be some more, I don't know, something to protect them, more information about them, stir up a bit of appreciation for them, you know. They are trashed, absolutely trashed. I heard they were trashed. I prepared for them to be trashed, but right, this is... <laughs> so disappointing. Once the history's gone, it's gone. There's no getting it back. Be nice if people cared a little bit more. Back at camp, it's right on noon, so it's tucker time. We're gonna cook a steak on an open flame. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited. Well, I've just got the fire going again, kicked it back off. 
sun setting. It's around half four. Well, it might even be closer to five now. Had a beautiful time just chilling this afternoon, just lay, laying, lazing around and uh, kicking back, as they say. Haven't done much at all since I got back and I cooked up some food for lunch. I've just been hanging around and went for a walk up the beach, a bit of a stroll. Just been enjoying, chilling out and doing nothing, which I think is very important, especially for us that are running cameras and pretty flat out filming stuff. I always try and make sure I spend time to just take it easy and forget about the camera for a while. Even if it's just an afternoon, you know, just switch off from it for a bit and soak up your surroundings. Oh, excuse me. Morning. Laid in a little bit this morning. Missed the sunrise a whole lot. I think it's, um, oh, it's like half seven or more. It's a car park out there. <laughs> Woken up few times by cars driving through and doing a loop I guess coming in late looking for somewhere to camp it's a car park out there now incredible yeah I'm glad I'm off today it's um yeah getting pretty loose in here <sighs> she's so busy I think I might just get a quick cup of run and pretty much pack and rack, to be honest. I won't bother with the fire or cooking a big breakfast or anything. I might just um might just have a hot cup and Yeah, I'll see. I'll go for a wander, see how I'm feeling.
Well, that's it. All packed up. Time to hit the highway. Uh, I'll go and check out this next little point of interest that I'm pretty keen to go and see. Dead on the highway. Where is everyone? They're all in there. Bacon and egg burger. Hmm. That'll hit the spot. So I'm at the Pinnacle Desert, yeah, the Pinnacles, here in the Nambung National Park. This is so cool, I was here about a year and a half or so ago with Kelly. Uh, really wanted to come back out, it's on my way home, it's southbound on my way home. So the weather's good, I left nice and early, especially so I could come here, come and check it out. So the story with these is that 25, 30 odd thousand years ago the ocean was right up. All this was ocean bed, ocean floor. The waters have receded again 25, 30 odd thousand years ago and they've left these limestone shell-like formations. Yeah, it's incredible. Some real small ones. Some huge ones, a couple meters high. Look at this. That's just incredible, isn't it? And it's uh, just such a stunningly random, sparse piece of land as well, with this real yellow sand. And yeah, it's just, it's quite phenomenal. That's it folks, trip's done. Time to hit the black top, cruise south, head home. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again here on the next one. Bye bye.